So Jim, tell me about Land Lab. How did how, what is Land Lab, and how did it get started? So Land Lab is a uh, conservation restoration project that was started by students about uh, seven years ago um, and in my AP environmental science class. And their goal was to give back to the environment, um, increase biodiversity, uh, to, to create an area where education can really happen um, on the ground. And more and more students get involved, more and more partners. And now we have about 100 acres of prairies and wetlands and forests for the community and the students to go out and kind of engage in, in outdoors. So if I'm understanding right, this is land that is directly adjacent to the school and was cornfield? Yeah, so when it first started out, um, we had a piece of land that we bought, purchased, um, and put a school on, and then we had some additional land out there in case we wanted to build another school. So all total in front of the building and behind the building, there was about 125 acres that was just being leased out to a tenant farmer for corn and soybeans. And when the students started working on this project, they, that seemed like a likely place to start a restoration project because they thought that that was an area that could, we could definitely impact the biodiversity. What's your advice to a teacher who, who would like to do something like this? So our district has gotten heavily involved in what we call or what is called project-based learning. Um, and I've become a huge, um, just a huge believer in that over the years now. This project and all the time that it consumes is far and above the best thing I've ever done. And I think, you know, when we really look at what we want to accomplish in education, we want kids who not just, you know, learn content, but understand the processes of thinking, to understand the processes of problem solving, life changing to some degree. Um, they had an opportunity to do something. And when I first started teaching this class on environmental science, it, it can be overwhelming. The fact that they've been able to engage in solutions has made all the difference in the world for these kids. They're, they're optimistic about their futures. We've got things we got to do, but they feel that they can actually do them. They feel like they can have some impact on um, things moving forward. And, and if, if we needed that to kids, we, we've given them everything so much land these days it's used for development like if there's any available space it seems like our first priority is to figure out how can we make money off of that how can we develop it build on it whatever it might be um, and so to see land like that right outside of a of a school be set aside for the environment for the natural world um, that to me is is really meaningful um, where somebody might drive by and just see a field full of weeds, I want them to see the animals and the birds and the things that are using that field and those marshes and those ponds. Um, it's a special place that uh, I want to help connect the community to. So if you were explaining what the land lab was to someone who didn't know what it was, how would you explain it? Like, what is the land lab? To describe it is a great place to learn, a great place to have for a school, a great place to just interact with a lot of things that you don't get at regular schools. Something to let you know to learn about animals and to respect nature. And expand our learning and be outside to learn. One of the original objectives of the Land Lab was to increase biodiversity. And um, in fact, that was probably the number one objective when this all started. Um, we, we've done that to a very high degree. Yeah, so the Soras are, uh, they're just kind of almost like little chicken-like birds that uh, live in wetlands. And if I'm patient enough and quiet enough, I can probably get some pictures of them. Some pretty cool photos of them. At the Land Lab, I've, I've seen 143 species. Total on the page, there's been 144 identified. So there's there's one that someone has seen that I haven't. I don't know which one it is, but uh, yeah, we're up over 140 species just there at the Lane Lab. And we've created something that that is a is a true treasure and has really increased biodiversity. Um, not just birds. I mean, we had we've got mink now in the Land Lab, um, which is a really unique species, um, and not only unique from the sense that you know they're there but from the the educational opportunities that come from that the research opportunities uh, you know we have one of the one of the only pictures there's been two since 1943 of a mink actually consuming a, a bullfrog um, as, a, as a food source and we have one of those pictures taken in our land lab 
and I bet there was 40 people there planting trees. It was, it was whole families. It was parents, it was their kids, and a lot of the parents were still in their business clothes, which just blew my mind. They were out there wanting to help plant those trees, you know, and, and knowing that they didn't have a lot of time. So to have them out there was truly inspiring to me. The idea of the burn is it, it's, it kind of sets back the invasive species and uh, the prairie plants that have kind of evolved to deal with fire recover much faster from the fire than the invasive plants do. And as a result, you give those a boost and you keep your invasives down. And where we're able to burn, we don't have a problem with invasive species at all. The fact that we are where we are with the land lab I think is a testament to the generation that I teach. I, I've been an environmentalist all my life. I, I've been a pessimist for most of it. The Land Lab has made me an optimist. Um, I believe that we can solve the problems we face, and I believe that it's this generation that will do that. Personally, as a teacher, it is the single greatest educational project I've ever been involved in. I, I think the true importance of the project is something else that I believe very strongly in in the ability of, of this generation to make a difference, to make a change. We planted like 200 trees out there and it would be really cool because over the years they're gonna grow and then maybe when my brother or sister is in that grade, they're gonna be huge. So that'd be really cool to know that we planted those and that they've worked so well. It's almost like our Marco and Graham pool. Totally. <laughs> Rod and Mason are here to tell us um, a little bit about an, uh, an amazing place called the Land Lab. Um, and they also um, made this, uh, along with some other students, made this film about the, the lab. But I want to start off just by asking you guys what you're up to now. Uh, how, what are you doing uh, these days, Rod? Uh, well, I'm a third year at The Ohio State University. Um, I'm living off campus with some friends right now while I study landscape architecture. Oh, cool. How about you, Mason? Uh, I'm currently a student at the University of Cincinnati, where I study international affairs in Spanish. So both of you attended Granville High School, and you went, you, as part of that, you were involved with the Land Lab. Tell, tell me about, what, like, what, what is Land Lab? So um, the Land Lab was originally a project that uh, came out of a bunch of students uh, who were taking the AP environmental science class at the high school. Um, and they do these things called take action projects, which is run by Mr. Redding. Um, and essentially what he does is he just has students work on a project throughout the course of the year where they can take what they're learning in the environmental science class and institute it in like a hands-on project. The land lab is full of uh, it's biodiverse, it's plants, and, it, and it's an area that animals that uh, were used to be here and that were gone, you know, like return to. Any, anyone who knows Mr. Redding has taken any class with him knows about the land lab. I love that. So as you come up, you're, you're aware of this and there's a legacy of that. I think it has definitely had an influence on the community, but I still feel like not enough people know about it, which was one of the reasons we decided to make a documentary in the first place. The interviews with the kids is really what got me, you know, like they're so passionate. Um, and I was thinking like back in intermediate school, like I didn't have any sort of like passion like like at all you know like this you know like I, I was like most intermediate schoolers you know like often doing my own thing focusing on whatever and these kids are out there planting trees knowing that you know in 30 years like that's where their you know their efforts are going to be are going to show and stay there that just really like resonated with me because I was like oh now I have this documentary that I can show people and I'm like I could have just stopped when like COVID happened and we all got sent home. But then because like Rod was like being so supportive with uh, helping me with the, gather the footage and edit it together. I was kind of like, oh, let's just keep doing this. I really like what we're doing. And then now it's getting picked up by like USA Today and getting in the local paper and cool to see how all of these things are going together. And like now we're kind of getting to leave our mark too.